Hi, I'm Kelly Vicetti Primo, and welcome to my podcast, Learning Curves, where I bring the small business community direct to you. In my podcast, Learning Curves, we learn about all the unique services that businesses have to offer, and we also learn about the different challenges that businesses go through. In times, businesses go through several different ups and downs, and we talk about the learning curves that we all go through and how we address those. I hope you enjoy my podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of Learning Curves. I'm Kelly Bassetti, and I'm so excited to introduce my next guest to you. They have a company that specializes in self-defense called Weapon Brand, and they're here today to talk to us about the importance of self-defense and also all the different things that their company offers, which I think is so important today and all the crazy things that's going on in the world. I think we all really need to get out there and learn how to defend ourselves and just be more aware of the things that are going on around us. So I'd like to introduce you to Jamie Anderson and Brian Anderson Needham. Thank you very much and welcome to my show. Thanks for having us. So let's go ahead and get started. Can you start by just telling us a little bit about your business and what you do? I'll go ahead. Um, (laughs) This is Jamie, and so I'll tell you how we got started, and that kind of leads into everything that we do, if that's okay. Um, Brian and I are three weeks apart. We're cousins, and um, he was going through a breakup. I I always say that. I think he hates it, but he was going through a breakup, and he came down to Florida from Ohio um, for a little saltwater therapy because, you know, saltwater cures everything. And when he was coming down, he knows me and my active lifestyle and that I'm always going to festivals and concerts and events where there's, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of people and um, even just going out to bars and restaurants. And he said, you know, I want you and your friends to be safe when you're doing this. Let me give you a little lecture on safety. It's what I've done, you know, my whole career. And I put it on Facebook, and like 30 people, both men and women, were um, like, yeah, we want to come within an hour and a half. And I only have parking for two spaces at two people at my house. So I was like, yeah, that's not going to work. Let me go to a coffee shop down the street and let us see if they'll let, um, you know, Brian do this lecture here. Right. So we went down the street. About 30 men and women came that night, and... They heard what he had to say and how informative it was and just they could tell in his heart how much he really cared about everybody being safe. And they said, we want more. How do we be trained by him? How do we get the self-defense? How do we get the boxing lessons? How does he um, teach the weapon safety classes? And I said, no, let's do this in Florida. Or we said it together. And uh, that's when Weapon Brand was born. We had another seminar that we started charging for the the next month. And people were like, okay, now we want self-defense. Now we want, you know, weapon safety. Now we want to learn weapon retention, how to hold on to our gun. And uh, realtors were coming to us and saying, you know, we go into these houses we're by ourselves, we're with people we don't know, sometimes it's late at night, Um, sometimes it feels like the buyer is more interested in me than the actual house. Um, So we offer a realtor safety seminar, Um, but if you go to our website at weaponbrand.com, it tells you about all of the classes that we offer, which is self-defense, weapon safety, weapon retention, realtor safety, um, rideshare driver safety for those who are driving Uber and Lyft. Um, we work with people of all ability levels. So whether you're in a wheelchair, a walker, or you know, perfectly capable of, of using all of your facilities, we'll work with you wherever you're at to help protect foot, you. <laughs> yes, a broken yeah. foot, because that actually makes you more vulnerable to yeah. a predator. Right. So that's how we got started in some of the classes that we offer. Um, when people knew Brian's background, I always like to brag. He never likes to say this, but I love to brag that he was a U.S. Marine and he was in the Marines. He was a sniper. And then he worked for the state of Ohio developing and um, training 
their largest law enforcement, their largest agencies, including law enforcement, parole, corrections, and he actually developed those programs of self-defense and a lot of the programs that we teach um, and trained the trainers. So, um, yeah, I, I brag about him. He, Thanks, he makes Jane. me really proud. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Jane. So, oh, but also... People always go, ooh, when I say this, and he never likes me to say it, but he was also a, um, a hostage negotiator and a violent fugitive recovery specialist. So you know he's badass, right? Wow. Like, nobody messes with him. <laughs> no, they all, they, no, they all mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mess with him probably yeah, the most. She, yeah, yeah, more than anybody, Jamie messes with. It's oh, <laughs> impressive background. Just the type of guy I would like to get trained <laughs> to help defend myself for sure. Yeah. So you also, um, when you were in Ohio, you mentioned that you worked and for the you know helping different like the law enforcement mm -hmm. train them. Yeah. So like, I, I was a full time trainer with mm -hmm. uh, the state of Ohio's largest agency, DRC. Um, and what they did was right off the bat, they had me redevelop the program that they already had. So I had to recreate it. So one of the ways that uh, they had me recreate it was I would travel all over the U.S. and I would take these different programs, uh, basically getting, getting my butt kicked. So I would take all these programs. I was also involved in, in a lot of different martial arts. And I was filtering all this stuff. So everything that I took... I would take the easiest stuff to learn that was the most effective, and then I developed that into a program. Um, now, the thing about working for the state government was um, there's a lot of strings attached, bureaucracies that, that say, you know, we can't just teach officers how to eye gouge somebody. So one of the nice things about Weapon Brand that we did was we took away those restrictions. Um, you know, law enforcement officers, they're, they're taught to protect themselves, protect other people that, that need protected and save their own lives. But a lot of times there are restrictions allowing them to do things that they need to do just because they're in the public eye, which you know makes sense. However, um, you walking out to your car with a broken foot, being attacked by one or two people, you're not going to have restrictions. So the nice thing about Weapon Brand is, is we took away those, those boundaries that the state of Ohio or any state or any, any government agency would uh, put in place for their officers and we're giving you the most effective way to protect yourself I love that yeah. and it is so important uh, could you you had, when we were talking earlier you had mentioned that you you have a when you're training that you kind of have a process and you teach people about how to be aware right. before you actually show them what to do you want to talk a little bit about how you go about that yeah. what the class is about so you know one thing we mentioned earlier was the biggest misconception about self-defense is it's all about physical techniques. Um, you know, you, you go to a lot of different places and learn self-defense from, you know, different various arts and, and programs. However, there's very, very few that teach you how to avoid that danger. So um, a, lot of, a lot of people will, will teach you tactics and physical techniques, but what we start off with is how to pick out what the bad guy does before the bad guy does bad guy stuff. So that right there is the one fight that you're not going to lose because you don't get into. Um, there's so many people that when, when we teach, um, especially a personal safety and threat awareness class, there's so many people that don't understand before that class they were already in a potential danger until we start talking about it. And then they think, oh, man, I, like that actually really happened to me. I really saw those things before. And um, now they could actually look back and say, I was I was potentially in danger. Now I could pick those things out through universal behavioral patterns and avoid them. So, you know, you know an one analogy that we use, Kelly, is we tell people if you're driving down the highway and you're speeding, you're doing 15 miles over the speed limit, you see a, a trooper or a police officer in the median, the first thing you do is pump your brakes and you slow down because you, you trust in your gut that you can see um, – this individual, you trust that it, it's a police officer and you're going to get a ticket out of it. Mm -hmm. Ticket's just money. But if we could teach you the same thing on how to start pumping your brakes with a bad guy, when you start picking out those indicators and avoid that area or slow down and start putting your head on a swivel, being more vigilant, that's going to make people safer. So, 
know, and, and people all the time, they're like, well, yeah, of course I'd slow down with a, with a police officer, but I've pulled into a gas station before where something looked a little bit shady or felt shady, and I didn't do anything about it. I just thought I'll, I'll be okay. You know, it's like how many people are taking that gamble every day? Yeah. So that's, that's one big thing, just to answer your question with that, that we teach on is how to avoid those situations before you get into it. And then if you are into it, we teach you the most effective ways, the easiest things to retain to be able to get out of that fight physically. And what about, you had mentioned, I'm just curious because this happened to me. I, I, it scared me because it could happen at a gas There's actually a, a friend of mine saw me at a gas station. He actually snuck in the back of my car. And then when I got in the car, he like scared the crap out of me. But I guess it just made me realize that, oh, you know, now every time I get in my car, I'm like looking in my car to make sure nobody's in my back seat because I'm like, that could actually happen to me. Yeah. Um, like how, and I know with the Uber driver situation that we hear a lot of um, horror stories of people getting kidnapped and um, you having to be aware of your, who your driver is and where you're going. Like, how do you get through a situation like something like that? As, as far as rideshare? Yeah. So we have a, a rideshare self-defense mm -hmm. system, the uh, program that we put in place uh, for rideshare drivers or people that are taking rideshare. So what we do is we teach them um, some cool stuff, really. We have them bring their own car and teach them things about their own car. Like, for instance, we have a, a client that we taught in uh, Dunedin that he didn't even know he had a trunk release. So if he got stuck in his trunk, how do you get out of that trunk? So we showed him where this trunk release was, things oh, like that. Oh, okay. Uh, but which that that was a, a, a pretty uh, pretty funny video and pretty pretty cool part of our training. However, um, and he's he's you know, shout out to Simon. Simon said he's he's one of our our, our good clients there. So, um, uh, but anyway, back to your question, we teach them um, the outside awareness of the car, mm -hmm. so the surrounding the the, uh, the environment that's surrounding the car, and then once you're in the car different types of close quarter techniques that you could use um, different places on where you'd rather them to sit. And if they did sit in certain places, how would you defend from them grabbing you, uh, pulling your seatbelt, uh, maybe pulling a weapon out, things like that. What a lot of people don't realize is, is they think in their minds, well, this, this certain technique, or this is what I'll do, this will work. But until you actually pressure test it, until you actually try it, where you're actually hitting me or hitting pads within that environment, you see that some things will work and some things won't. So we just give them then that mental blueprint to go off of that this this actually works. I'm going to be able to do this, but this was just a misconception. Right. Yeah. Speaking of misconceptions, I get this one all the time being a woman and it um, I didn't realize it until after I started this company with Brian and, and he's teaching me as we go too that one of the misconceptions is mace or you see all of these companies out there i think one is called like damsel in distress or something where they sell all of the all of these products that are supposed to protect you but like he said about the practice unless you've practiced with that device do you know is it going to shoot in a stream or is it going to shoot more like out in a funnel um is it windy that day so is it going to come back and harm you um, oh. Are you stronger than the assailant, or is the assailant stronger than you? And are they going to be able to grab it from you and then use it on you? So we never recommend like those devices as your primary form of protection. And there's so many misconceptions out there about um, tasers and mace, and it's all about like have you practiced them? And just like self defense in a car or outside of a car, have you practiced it with your weapon? Have you dry fired? Do you know what the um, poundage is that where the wall trigger. is on your trigger? Um, people, you know, they buy a firearm and it sits in their closet. And then and you'd the, probably, when you have to use it, you'd probably freeze. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is natural. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's, that's a natural sympathetic. Because you're scared anyway. Like, yeah. <gasps> what do I do? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm so glad Jamie brings this up because. And this is, a, I guess you can kind of call it a hot button topic for a lot of people because there's so many people that rely on that, that secondary device as a primary device, which is, you know, like mace or anything else they carry in their purse or their pocket. I, I just saw a video, you know, one of our, our trainers um, up north for weapon brand, Terry, she sent me a reel that this girl, she's pulling out all these, all these devices, you know, mm -hmm. from her person and from her purse. And um, it's like, man, if you just 
knew how to avoid it, first of all. And then second, if you could just know how to use your own hands and your own body as a weapon, why would you need that stuff anyway? What they don't realize is, and, and exactly what Jamie is saying is, it's, it's beyond just the tool, it's you. I'm not going to allow you to reach into your purse. What if I'm grabbing your purse? I'm, you know, I'm not going to allow you to reach down to your ankle to get that secondary device. What, what if I'm grabbing onto you? And have you practiced that in a struggle? You know, she said, have you practiced it, just the device uh, itself? Does it shoot? How does it shoot? Is it able to shoot? But what about in a struggle? You know, and you're going to have that bounce back on you. Have you ever worked through a fight um, with OC, pepper spray, or mace in your eyes? You know, I have, and it's absolutely horrible. And if you've never felt that, you're going to go through a shock because you can't see, you can't breathe, and that's saying that you're, the, the, the chemical that you are using is good. You know, some of this stuff that people buy, that, and how do you know it's good? You haven't tested it. So you're going to rely on something that should be secondary on, on somebody that, that's attacking you or trying to take your life or somebody in your life away from you, and, and you're going to use something that should be secondary. So that's, um, you know, we, we don't promote using that initially. We promote using as, as, as a secondary device or maybe even as a, a deterrent. But just use, that, that's, that's where the whole weapon brand name came from, you know, becoming yeah. your own weapon. No, that's really great advice. And as you were saying that, I was like, yeah, I went back. I used to bartend a long time ago, and we worked really late at night. So a lot of times I'm leaving the place after I lock up and walk into my car by myself. I always had a, you know, I had my my mace on me while I was walking around, but I had never used it, you know, before or anything. And it, it was kind of a lot, there was a lot of that was happening and then you had to be really careful. The fact that, you know, the, the owners let you close alone and that kind of thing was kind of crazy too. But at, at nighttime, there's a lot of stuff that happens. Yeah. And, and you, waitresses, <laughs> waiters, mm-hmm. bartenders, adult performers, you know, exotic dancers, they're all leaving with a wad of cash after their shift. And it's at night. And they also have, you know, people that are there with them, flirting with them, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing that's probably watching them as they leave or whatever. And they know the restaurant closes at 10 o'clock. The waiters and waitresses do Mm -hmm. their shift work, and then they're done at, you know, out of there at 10, 45, 11. Yep. At CEA Marketing, we take your business, your passion, and your why, and we sell it. If you're unsure where to start marketing your company, CEA Marketing is here to help. Our team at CEA has tons of experience and top-notch training, which helps you take all the stress and confusion out of marketing your own business. After years of working with large companies like Pulte Homes, the Outback Bowl, and Metro Places, We guarantee the successful implementation of a marketing strategy. Yeah, Yeah. that's that's another one. If you you own a bar or restaurant and you are not protecting your most valuable assets, which are your employees, you are culpable when they have an attack. Yeah, and it happens. So I remember a lot of the bars and restaurants around us, a couple people got shot, Jeez. and there was just all kinds of crime going on, which is like, well, that was in South Tampa in Hyde Park, which is supposed to be like a really nice area. But at nighttime, yeah, 3 o'clock in the morning wasn't so nice a lot. Very and if, scary. <laughs> if you work in a, in a company and your company isn't providing that training for you, you better be questioning your, well, one, invest in yourself and do it yourself or question your management. Why the heck aren't you providing this for us? Do you care about us? Um, I literally, I'm trying to remember the company right now, but a lady said, oh, I know who it was. It was at a very large hotel. Somebody who works there said, I want you to come in and talk to my manager, tell him about the programs that you have. Um, I think this would be great for our employees. And the manager was not don't doesn't have any trainings like this in place, but couldn't have been less interested. And I was like, that's the company that you're choosing to work for that is saying, I don't care about my employee safety. So as an employee, you know, luckily this girl, she does invest in her own training. Mm-hmm. 
but it's heartbreaking when when an employer doesn't want to invest in their company's safety. I just think now looking back on all that, all the places that I used to work, none of them, like they were more concerned of, oh, is a bar, are you stealing behind the bar and are you doing the right kind of counts and counting the liquor afterwards? Mm -hmm. But no type of training on, you know, hey, are you going to be safe when you leave here at nighttime? Mm -hmm. You know, man, just from somebody that, that runs now a couple of businesses, the one thing that... Um, that I've learned just over the past, you know, our training facility in Ohio just hit its four year anniversary just two days ago. And um, the one thing that, that I could tell you, and even from the job that I had, had in the state is supervising, you know, a lot of different instructors. The more you invest in your people, the more they're going to invest in your company mm -hmm. because they know you care about them. So that's, you know, when you say that, that you know, your, your employers before were so worried about you stealing, if you knew that they cared about you and they were putting you through different types of training to make you safer, then you're going to invest in them more. And, and that's so many employers don't realize that. Absolutely. And, and that, that's what creates a good culture in, in, a, uh, a, in a working environment also. So you know, I, I have a training facility now that during COVID couldn't believe stayed open, but it stayed open because of the people that I had there. And I, I believe the only reason that those people remain there, whether they work there or whether they were just members there, it's because I, they knew I invested in them. And I think um, every employer could, could learn from that, so. Yeah, absolutely. And just with, you know, all the, your trainings with all the different, you know, the, the shootings that are happening right yeah. now and also Florida and this particular area here in Tampa, um, Clearwater, we talked about the human trafficking. Yeah. I talk to my girls about it all the time. Like, you have to be so aware of your surroundings, but I don't just don't, sometimes I don't think they realize it. But having that proper train of what to look for, right. I think, is something that we need, we all need ourselves and our kids just so they're aware when they're traveling, when they're going to the mall, when they're going wherever they're going, yeah. that they know the signs of what to look for. You know, the, the biggest, and especially for your daughters, Kelly. One of the biggest misconceptions, once again, we're, we're talking about misconceptions that people have is because I don't want it to happen, it won't happen. But what they don't realize is it's not up to you. Right. The, the attacker doesn't need your consent. The attacker doesn't care about your consent. The attacker is going to do whatever they have to do to get whatever they want. So the only thing you can do then is learn how to avoid the situation. And if you can't avoid it, how do you fight out of it? And um, so many people just... Once again, they, they have this misconception that, well, just because I don't want it to happen, well, then it's not going to happen. Right. Uh, we have people all the time, for, we, you know, we teach um, weapons retention classes, how to hold on to your firearm during an incident. And, uh, and, and just to be clear, you know, we, we get this question all the time with the weapon brand. Um, you guys must be big gun enthusiasts and, and um, you know, anti-gun uh, anti law. We're indifferent to the fact that if anybody has a gun or not. What our stance is, if you do have a gun, get the proper training. Don't just buy the gun and, and just set it somewhere. but Or don't just buy the gun and go to the range and think that you're becoming a better shooter. You know, we have the drills in place um, for you to hold on to that gun and become a better shooter through the exercises that we have. But uh, back, back to business, the one thing that we consistently hear from people when we talk about our weapons retention classes mm -hmm. and we get this from mostly guys they say well I'm not I'm not going to allow them to take my gun well if they get close I'm going to shoot them I'm not going to allow them to take well it's not up to you once that gun breaks the plane of its holster which you probably haven't practiced anyway it's not your gun anymore it's our gun it's only your gun to protect and once again they say well I'm not I'm not going to allow them to have it well it's not up to you and once I get my hands even close to that firearm, it's not like you're shooting at paper anymore. And it's not like you're even handling your gun um, in a uh, nice, cool, or warm environment where you're, where you're not breathing heavy, where your heart rate's not up, where you're not shaking, where you don't have tunnel vision, um, you know, all those things. It, it's now you're in a fight. And even without the gun, what people don't understand is if they get into that situation, that human trafficking situation that we were talking yeah. about, and somebody's trying to manipulate them or somebody's trying to even snatch them up and take them somewhere, you're now in a fight and there's things that happen with your body physiologically 
that you may not have ever been involved with before and how are you going to fight out of that and we could teach you that that's great people also think yeah. with human trafficking that it's just young children who are being kidnapped to take into you know whether it's sex slavery or labor slavery it's not just young kids and uh I have an ex-boyfriend who used to say, you don't have to worry about it. You're an old lady. Nobody wants to kidnap you for, like, sex <laughs> trafficking. It's, it's not true. Um, it's not funny, but it's not true. It's, it can be, you know, anyone from um, a young child to a, an older adult. So, Yeah, I've heard of older adults even being kidnapped here locally. Mm -hmm. We big awareness I get this, on that right now. I'm in a lot of women's networking groups, and I get the story all the time of people who are like, I saw this, and I'm not sure, but it really felt like it could have been like a kidnapping situation. You know, I saw this van or this, um, this car kept circling, or they were following too closely behind. I probably hear it weekly, and I'm like, it was probably somebody looking to, to kidnap or human traffic you. So. If anything, take advantage of you yeah. in some way. Yeah. You know, whether it's human trafficking or steal from you or, you know, get money from you somehow. Is there um, any type of statistics or anything that you can share of these types of events that happen to people well, like just on a daily basis? Because I'm sure you've, you know. Jamie just talked about just. The area that we're in right now, just the Tampa and St. Pete, third in the nation, right? Yeah, for human trafficking. Yeah. I mean, that, geez, that, that's it's that's you know all what you we're know. we're in a port city. Um, it's a high tourist area. Um, yeah, there's a lot of hotels, motels, things like that that can uh, support that kind of activity. So. Yeah, but regardless of statistics, Kelly. One thing that, that we try to get through everybody's head is just because it's never happened doesn't mean it won't. You know, right. There's so many people that think that, well, it's never happened to me before, that I've never been in this situation, or nothing bad has ever happened to me that you know of. You know, you don't know what's happening on the outside. And it's like, man, like, there's so, there's so many things that are happening around you that you probably don't realize just because it didn't happen before, that doesn't mean it, it won't ever happen. And that's part of us. You know, we, we, we teach off the, the ARAR acronym, the, the accept, and then recognize, act, and, and recover. But um, just the acceptance part of it, there's so many people that just can't accept the fact that they could be a victim. Yeah. Uh, and and we, don't, we don't preach off of you know, paranoia. We don't, we don't, we're not ambulance chasers, you know. <laughs> To a point. <laughs> you know? I, I struggle with that because I do most of the marketing. And I'm like, there was another mass shooting. We need to have an active shooter class. But how do you promote something? You know, there's one every day. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and I don't want to be that person who's always like, there was an active shooter. You need to sign up. Or, you know, there was a kidnapping in your neighborhood. Yeah. Sign up for self-defense. I don't want to be that person. But it's also really hard because everybody thinks that it's not going to happen to them. I think it's becoming more of a reality to a lot of people, yeah, though, when you see everything that's happening right now. The active shooter thing is, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that particular course and seminar that you all offer. Yeah, um, on October 15th mm -hmm. at the Dunedin Community Center, we're actually doing an active shooter training um, what I always say to people, and Brian can tell you a little bit more about what happens in the training, but what I always say to people is that your kids are being trained in active shooter response in their schools. But as we saw in Indiana recently, it doesn't always just happen in schools. It happens in shopping malls. It happens at music festivals. It happens at Bars church, and clubs. Bars and clubs. If, and if your family is with you, what are you going to do? Are you going to depend on your eight-year-old's training from his school to protect your family in that active shooter situation? And we're not guaranteeing that you're going to get out of alive if there's an active shooter situation. We're guaranteeing that you have a better chance and that you might know what to do in that situation as opposed to just panicking. Um, so that's October 15th at Dunedin Community Center. But Brian can 
tell you a little bit more about what actually happens in that training. Yeah, so we, um, during that training, we teach you several different things. Obviously, like, like every class that we teach, uh, we teach you different uh, tactics for situational awareness, mm -hmm. things to look for, things to watch out for. And then once you're actually in that event, we start talking about secondary exits, you know. Um, if anything, what it does is it starts to open up your eyes and it starts to make you realize things when you walk into a building um, or you walk into an environment, you start scanning, you start looking. And, you know, like, like we always preach, we're not trying to make you more paranoid, just a little more prepared. Um, the other thing that we'll do is we'll show you different examples of how your brain will go right back to, for instance, and this little spoiler alert for anybody that's attending, um, you know, people that are able to get up, move, and be active, one little trick that we'll do is we'll tell them, okay, at any time now, we're going to tell you, get out. And you have to get up out of your seat and just get out of the building or get out of the room. And what you'll find is the majority of people will go right back to the same door that they came in. So then they'll come back in, they'll sit down, we'll tell them how good they did and, uh, or how bad they did. <laughs> and, then, um, and then the second time or third time, depending, we'll lock that door without them knowing. And you, you're going to see a bottleneck of people go to that same door because they now have already come through it once and went through it uh, as an exterior exit. Um, two times now, and now they'll start to bottleneck, and right there they're just sitting ducks. So we start to talk then about okay, so these are the things that you're looking for, you know, these secondary exits. You know, if you're in a mall, for instance, you know, Jamie brought up um, an active shooter in a mall. People will automatically start thinking the primary door, but what does every store have? So instead of going for for just primary door go through a store what does every store have in the back of the store usually somewhere where the distributor comes and drops things off right get out of that door um, in a kitchen um, the, or I'm sorry in a restaurant the kitchen go through the kitchen instead of the main door you came through there's usually a drop-off door in the kitchen um, and if anything there's better places to hide and possibly weapons if uh, which which would be the third thing that we teach is to fight so our whole um, um, thing of teaching active shooter is first get away no matter what under any circumstance just get away and if you can't get away create a barrier um, in a hiding position make sure you have some type of barrier between you an obstacle between you and the attacker and third if you have to fight and we could teach you on how to do that but you know we don't want people automatically just trying to think saving people uh, we want them to save themselves or their assets which is usually their children get out you know save your family uh, law enforcement is coming. However, national average is 18 minutes. So if yeah, you, by then it, it's probably too late. Yeah, and I, if it was two minutes, it'd be too late. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we, we get a little bit of pushback from law enforcement sometimes, or, or people in that community. And I worked in that community for for uh, quite a long time, 21 years. And we tell them, well, regardless, you're coming, and your area may be two to three minutes, but what about other areas? You know, there's other, other areas that could take 45 minutes. You know, so you, like I said, national average is 18 to 20 minutes. So you learn how to become your own weapon, um, how to become your own protector during that, that initial event, how to get out, and if you can't get out, how to hide. If you can't hide, then how do you fight? And that, that's, those are some of the things that we teach in the active shooter class. Those are all great things. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. I look forward to the day when we don't ever have to offer that class yeah, again. Yeah. But sadly, it is our reality yes. right now, yeah. especially here in America. So it doesn't just happen in America, but it's um, he he's he taught me this trick that if you Google your birthday and put active shooter, you'll find an active shooter situation that happened on your birthday at some point in time throughout your lifetime oh wow so yeah. it yeah it's happening if everybody's doing time. that that's that's pretty much every every day of the year mm -hmm. and if it's not every day it's it's pretty dang i think close. there were 422 active shooter situations in america last year that's more than one a day that is more than one a day yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely something the community needs to get around and yeah. Yeah. october 15th october 15th and you also had a couple other 
Yeah. Um, Courses the, that you had mentioned going yeah. on in Dunedin as well. Yeah. On September 10th, we do a personal safety and threat awareness class, which is identifying the predator before they make you your prey. Um, we say it's kind of like creating the weapon mindset to get you in that place to not ever have to use self-defense. Mm -hmm. um, and then October 15th is active shooter. We are looking for sponsors for that. So if there's any companies out there that want to sponsor the active shooter training, it's really great um, PR and goodwill for the community for you. It to, really is. For you to be attached yes. to something that says, hey, look, we actually care about you. So, um, And then November 10th is self-defense. Right before the holidays, crime always goes up around the holiday season. Yes, there's lots of home invasions. People are at the shopping malls. Um, so, yeah, right before the holidays, we wanted to offer that self, self-defense self class. That's right here in Dunedin. Mm -hmm. So but you can uh, find all this information. I'm going to link your website and the Instagram and the Facebook page where these events are listed. So people want to go and sign up, they can go there Great to learn more. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we had talked about, and then we did it a little bit through the podcast as well, is... This is something that, that's really great that you can offer your employees. You can bring 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 you in to train a whole group of an entire organization. And this is a great gift that you can provide the people that are working for you. Yeah, if you need holiday gifts, we do gift certificates. Um, we can come to your home, your office, your church, your Girl Scout troop, your Boy Scout troop, your holiday party and you might not want to sit your holiday party <laughs> <laughs> but you could give gift certificates for your employees to come to our classes or have us come and do a corporate event at your office for your employees so we would love for you to protect your most valuable assets which um, you know most companies can't run without their employees so oh, they can't I plan on, I want to set up an event here at Second Soul because awesome. I think I am. A holiday party. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, maybe with one of my women's groups or um, get you guys in here because I just think that I'm, I'm just like you said, like all your friends signed up. I know if I told all my girlfriends about this, that they would sign up and I'd be like, you know how many stupid things that we've done in our past that we probably should have done oh this gosh. a long time ago. And, you know, I'm just now thinking about it, but it's, I, and I definitely want to get my girls, yeah. you know, your kids yeah. need to be aware. There's what I will so tell much. you um, is through October when we have our anniversary party, which that um, date is to be determined, but through sometime in October, if you get a group of six people together, yours is free. So you plus five others, your session is free. So it's a great girls' night, even a guys' night. Like, have your guys come and do a weapon safety or weapon retention class or self-defense. But most men think that they're too macho. But I always tell them that I could probably kick their ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they I, don't... I know she can kick their ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a great – the best gift you can give somebody, in my opinion, is the gift of confidence and safety. So I think so, too. Absolutely. Well, is there anything else you'd like to tell our community about? I know. What? Uh, Weaponbrand.com slash apparel. We have some sweet apparel. <laughs> so yeah. like Jamie says, if uh, you can't be a weapon, you could at least look like look like you could be one with, with wearing our apparel. <laughs> if you're wearing a shirt that says weapon, nobody's probably going to mess with you because yeah. yeah. they're going to think you're carrying right. a firearm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> So yeah. you have shirts and hats, shirts, hats, t-shirt, uh, shirts, hats, sweatshirts, leggings. Our leggings are amazing. Um, yeah, there's a lot more lady stuff than there is guys on there for some reason, but yeah, it's all most cool. of our clients are women. Yeah, <laughs> so wear that up, especially after your training or the uh -huh. new badass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Watch oh, out! Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> every it's it's probably a, great, a big confidence. It's yes, yeah. and it's a great Ways conversation people. starter because people come up to you and are like. Why are you wearing something that says weapon? You know, and so if you're a shy person and would like people to talk to you, it's a good conversation starter. <laughs> <Great. laughs> so, yeah, so you can check out their website at weaponbrand.com. Mm -hmm. 
and follow us on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is great if you have a company and you want us to reach out to them, shoot me a message. I'm happy to talk to your HR people or the people who own your company and get us in there because your safety is important. So, oh, That's really great. And once again, we are going to put all this information in the show notes and how you can contact Jamie and Brian and set up an event and get them in there and get your team, your kids, yourself trained. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Thank you so much, Kelly. Yeah. It was a blast. Well, thank you so much for coming on my show today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. We loved it. And thank you for tuning in to Learning Curves. We'll be back again next week. Thanks. Second Soul Studios is a full-service production studio with capabilities for photo, video, podcasting, editing, co-working, and more. Our photo video studio has a number of different backdrop choices and props to choose from. We also have a gourmet kitchen set, or if you're an upstar podcaster, you'll love our four-person podcast studio. So what are you waiting for? Visit SecondSoulStudios.com to book a tour today.